Hey guys, today we're going to do applying domain and range. We're going to answer the question, how do I find the domain and range from real world situations? So the first thing you need to decide is, is this situation discrete or continuous? Because that's going to depend on how we write the domain and range. So if it is discrete, partials between the whole points will not work and our domain and range will be listed with a comma and curly brackets. So if your domain is something that can be counted, then it will be discrete because you'll want to list out those things that you can count. On the other hand, if it's continuous, then all the partials between the whole points will work or they'll be true. And then we will write our domain and range as an interval with inequalities. And then we want to figure out what the domain is with the independent variable and the range is with the dependent. And then sometimes if we're stuck on what values um, are for the domain and range, it can be helpful to make a table or write an equation to represent the situation and to think about what the lowest and highest possible values of the domain are. So we're trying to figure out what the independent domain is and what the dependent, the range is. So we are draining this five gallon bucket at a half gallon per minute. So the number of minutes is gonna determine the number of gallons that have drained. So that means that the domain is the number of minutes and then the range is the number of gallons. So we do not know the number of minutes that it is going to take to drain this, but we know where we start at. We start at zero minutes, and then the number of gallons, it tells us we have a five gallon bucket. So we start at five. So there's some information there. So if we make a table, it can help us figure out what happens. We start at zero minutes and a five gallon bucket. And then after one minute, we would be at 4.5 since it's draining at a rate of half gallon per minute. And then after two minutes, we would be at four, three, we would be at 3.5, four, we would be at three, five minutes, we would be at 2.5, gonna continue this over here, and then six minutes, we would be at two gallons, seven, we would be at 1.5, eight, we would be at one, nine would be at 0.5, and then after 10, we would finally be at zero gallons. So I know that I listed this out in a table, but keep in mind this is continuous, so everything between these points is true. And now we have our starting point and our ending point. I started in my domain at zero gallons and I ended at 10 gallons. So my domain is between zero and 10. And then my range, I started at five gallons and I ended at zero gallons. So my range is between zero and five. All right, let's look at number two. It says the RBMS football team is ordering chicken sandwiches for dinner before their game. There is a $50 delivery fee plus $450 per sandwich. What is a reasonable domain and range for this situation if they're going to order between 217 and 220 chicken sandwiches? So this is definitely a discreet situation because I don't think that they'll let you order like half a chicken sandwich or a third of a chicken sandwich. So we're going to list out the possible numbers with curly brackets and commas. Next thing we need to decide is what the domain x values independent represent and what the range output y values represent. So we're talking about ordering chicken sandwiches and their total cost. So the total cost is going to be determined by the number of sandwiches. So that means that our independent or input is the number of sandwiches and that will tell us the total cost. 
Okay, now we want to see if they gave us any information on the number of sandwiches they're ordering. They did. They're going to order between 217 and 220 chicken sandwiches. So I actually can already write the domain for this problem. They're going to order 217, 218, 219, or 220 sandwiches. The total cost is going to be a little trickier to find. I'm going to need to write an equation or use the information that they gave us to figure out the total cost. There's a $50 delivery fee plus $4.50 per sandwich. So to find why the total cost, it'll be $50 plus $4.50 per sandwich. So what I'm going to do is make a table and find these specific domain values with the equation. 217, 218, 219, and 220. I'm going to plug that into the equation. Y equals 50 plus 450X to find my output Y values. So let's figure out how much 217 sandwiches cost. It'd be 50 plus 450 times 217. I'm just going to put that in the calculator. So 217 sandwiches would cost $1,026.50. Now let's figure out how much 218 sandwiches would cost. So I'm going to change this 217 to 218. That would be $1,031. Now let's figure out 219. Be 1,035.5 and then 220. would be $1,040. So now I have all of my range values. So I can write the range. It'll be 1,026.5 or 1,031 or 1,035.5 or 1,040. So there are the domain and range of this situation with the football team ordering chicken sandwiches. Domain was the number of sandwiches and range was the cost. Let's look at number three. A math teacher is going to order new dry erase boards for her classroom. The function d of x equals 7 plus 250x can be used to find the total cost d of x based on the amount of dry erase boards x that are ordered. What is a reasonable domain and range for this situation if the teacher is going to buy between 27 and 30 dry erase boards? So this is a discrete situation because I don't think that math teacher is going to be wanting partial dry erase boards. So we are going to list out the domain and range here. Let's think about what the domain or X values independent are going to represent and what the range output Y values are going to represent. We are talking about the number of dry erase boards and the total cost. And they actually told us what the domain is here. It says amount of dry erase boards is going to be X. So that is our domain. So it's the number of boards. And that's going to determine the total cost, D of X. So that's our range. Okay, now I want to figure out the actual domain and range here. So the domain they actually told us the teacher is going to buy between 27 and 30 dry erase boards. And I'm going to list that out because it's not everything between 27 and 30. It's only the whole numbers. So the domain here is going to be 27, 28, 29, or 30. And then we can use that to find the range. The range is D of X and D of X is found by doing seven plus 250 X. So I'll set up a table. I'll do seven plus 250 times the X value. And that will tell me the range or Y value. And I'm finding this for 27, 28, 
29 or 30 dry erase boards. So seven plus 250 times 27 So 27 dry erase boards would cost $74.50. Let's figure out what 28 dry erase boards would cost. Be $77. Let's figure out 29. It'd be $79.50. And let's figure out 30 be $82. So there are the range values, the cost based on the amount of boards. So our range would be 74.5 or 77 or 79.5 or 82. So there's the specific domain and range for the situation where the domain was the dry erase boards between 27 and 30 and the range was the cost of that. Okay, last one, Bella is standing on a second story balcony and throws a volleyball down to her friends in her backyard. The path is shown in the graph below. What is a reasonable domain and range for this situation? So it is not only zero and one and two seconds and so on. It is everything between zero and eight seconds. So this is a continuous situation. So we are going to write our domain and range with inequalities. And since they drew us a graph, I can see that time is in seconds. That's on the x-axis, that's the domain. And then the height is on the y-axis, so that's the range. Which also makes sense because the time is going to be the independent that determines the height. So now let's write our domain and range for this situation. Let's start with the domain. So the domain is the time in seconds. She starts at zero seconds. And after eight seconds, it finally reaches her friends on the ground. So my domain is in between zero and eight. So we're going to start with zero. That's the lowest that the domain is. And then it doesn't go higher than eight. So there's the domain and then the range. So we have to look at the whole graph. We do start at 15, but the lowest that it goes is zero. So my range is zero and then the highest that it goes is 20. So my domain, the lowest it goes is zero. I'm sorry, the range, the lowest it goes is zero and that's less than or equal to y. And then y is the range is less than or equal to 20. That's the highest it goes.